Hey everyone, um, today I'm going to talk about a little bit about how I've been using all of the tools that you've seen today uh, to help enterprises and educational institutions and students start building virtual reality applications and help train new developers for building for VR. Uh, so as Tony said, I'm Liv Erickson. I'm a virtual and augmented reality developer evangelist at Microsoft and I'm also Miss Livy Rose on Twitter. I like VR a lot and for anybody who knows me, that's not really a, that's a little bit of an understatement sometimes. Um, so what exactly does a virtual reality evangelist do? Uh, generally speaking, I spend my time building open source applications and releasing source code for new virtual reality technologies that are coming out. Basically, I'll play with anything I can get my hands on and then teach other people how to do it too. Uh, so I have the virtual reality and augmented reality developer blog. Uh, I have a series on our developer network called Just a VR Show that has a bunch of video tutorials on how to get started with virtual reality development. And I basically just love to play with all of the different tools and technologies that are coming out around immersive technology right now. Uh, so over the past two years, I've been working on a lot of different VR uh, applications, playing with just about everything ranging from Unity to Unreal to uh, the virtual reality web with WebVR and A-Frame. And I've been fascinated with the promise of the VR web since I first heard about it back in 2014. Uh, so the speakers that you've already heard, they've been some of my kind of industry role models for quite a few years. And I'm going to share a little bit about how I'm using those technologies to help onboard new developers. Uh, so we're kind of in the midst of a virtual reality and immersive revolution. Uh, we're breaking away from a two-dimensional screen and bringing that into 3D. And you've seen a lot of opportunities and examples around this already today. Uh, but for years, we've been kind of thinking about and building applications for kind of one screen, be it a very small screen or a very large screen. And virtual and augmented reality kind of changes the way that we're thinking about our applications and building them. So how do we really get there? As we look at what it's going to take to have virtual reality adopted broadly in the industry, there's a lot of overhead costs that we need to think about when it comes to retraining developers. Um, from an enterprise standpoint, they don't necessarily want to start an entirely new tool set. They don't want to have to kind of learn new languages necessarily. And you know, when you bring that into the education sector, you also have a big question around cost and what it's going to cost to get devices in, to get software in. Um, for students and to help them. So as you can probably tell from what you've already seen today, the web VR kind of ecosystem and the VR web lowers that barrier to entry with virtual reality development significantly. Uh, a lot of the time, developers are now able to work in a language that they're very familiar with, as well as take advantage of all of the infrastructure that's been built up around web development over the past several years. Um, so you don't have to retrain new developers to kind of bring in the web VR ecosystem works with a lot of existing technologies that are already out there, which is why I've really found it to be incredibly helpful with teaching new developers. So when I first started learning how to develop for virtual reality, I was a little bit overwhelmed. Uh, there was so much potential, so many different devices to choose from, different platforms that you can target to build for. And spending time over the last two years both learning and teaching virtual reality development, I've realized that as this green circle, which looks very blue on the screen, represents the things that you can learn about virtual and augmented reality development, this tiny little circle is about enough to get you started. Uh, so I've seen a lot of promise in using um, the VR web as a tool for new developers and help bring enterprises into the industry. And I'm going to talk a little bit about how I've done that in the past. Uh, so you heard from Visor, and you've seen a couple of examples of this. Uh, Visor is an amazingly powerful tool, and I found it especially useful for teaching the basics of graphics programming. Graphics programming is not something that I experienced when I went through college for computer science until I specifically started focusing on virtual and augmented reality technologies. So we have a lot of developers now who are showing an interest in VR who need to learn the basics of graphics and graphic programming. And being able to break that into kind of a node-based tool on the web that we can go in and collaborate with has been incredibly helpful for showing things about materials on objects and textures and scaling environments and what really goes into um, a VR system. Uh, with intro, I, I, I mentioned Just a VR Show a little bit earlier. This is a screenshot from uh, episode two of Just a VR Show. Um, in this one, and if you're curious about learning how to do some of this yourself, um, this video talks a little bit about going into um, the web VR code and what all of that breakdown looks like for an application. Uh, this particular application shows pictures that were taken from the International Space Station. 
as if you're standing in outer space. Um, I really like space and I really like VR, so it made sense to kind of combine these together. But what this shows is the beauty of how 300 lines of custom code in my index.html file using the web VR tools that you've already heard about today um, can pull in existing data that's out there on the web without having to write a lot of custom parsers, without having to write a lot of um, custom code to bring in those web technologies into a desktop application. This is available on the browser and anybody can point their, you know, go to their UR that URL and look at this now. Uh, and so what that lets you do is it kind of shows you how easy it is to get started with this. This was one of the first applications that I built using uh, WebVR. And even with no um, experience developing for WebVR, it was able to get this up and running in about two days. And a lot of that is because before I started programming for virtual reality, I wasn't doing a lot of web development. And being able to do all of this in something like a text editor makes it very accessible for students. Uh, so this past year, Stanford has launched a CS for Social Good class, inviting in guest lecturers to talk about forward-facing technologies and how students can get started building with those today um, to help solve problems that are out there right now in our world. And so one of the labs that I helped build for them and taught over there at Stanford was a social good um, application that visualized ocean pollution from the perspective of the sea creatures that live down there. And I built this using A-Frame because we had to this challenge of figuring out how do you develop a, a virtual reality application for people who have never taken maybe a graphics class, have never done anything with virtual reality development before, and don't have you know, a desktop VR system ready to go. And A-Frame turned out to be a really excellent tool for this because all of the students already had a text editor installed. They could do all of the work that they were, like see all of the work that they were building right in their browser immediately and have a sense of what it was that they were building for virtual reality without having to learn specific new languages or different frameworks or different uh, tool sets. Uh, and this is really powerful because it opens up the potential for creative students to go out there and start building their own applications, even if they don't have dedicated VR hardware or a system that can kind of run a desktop VR uh, headset right now. Um, looking into kind of the enterprise sector, a lot of the big grabs that kind of typically draw virtual reality developers into the ecosystem is around gaming or social applications. And I love virtual reality games, but if I'm talking to a, a big company about how they can use VR for their business, that's not usually what they want to hear. And one of the things that I built using uh, the web VR framework that you saw earlier that Boris wrote uh, was around visualizing Excel data in virtual reality. Uh, so again, this is all built using the tools that you've seen earlier, and it plays really nicely with the .NET framework, uh, which is something that has maybe not always been the case for certain things. Uh, so right now, you know, enterprises like to see that their, their applications are going to be widely available, that people can go and start playing around with this today, that their employees who are building these types of experiences aren't going to have to relearn a different ecosystem. And it's really interesting to me to see how we can start using virtual reality to develop complex visualizations around big data and then start thinking about all of the other things that the web has enabled us to do around machine learning and how that will uh, impact virtual reality experiences or how you could use VR to do uh, more complex visualizations around what your th those data sets that you're gathering, uh, what smart devices may look like when they're connected through the web to your virtual reality applications. And because web VR and A-Frame and these tools are already built with the web first in mind, you're not trying to shoo this little tiny feature that you want to build into um, a specific type of application. It's just already out there and available for you today. So the great part about all of this, as you've seen, is that the fun really starts now. Uh, everybody that talked today is already working on this. I've been working on this for a couple of years. Uh, it's been a ton of fun to just play around with all of these technologies as they're evolving and seeing how that ecosystem is bringing in different creators, um, not even necessarily people with development backgrounds. You've seen, I've seen a lot of um, artists adopting A-Frame as their platform of choice for bringing their environments and their models in. Um, there's just so much potential right now for not just virtual reality, but specifically the VR web. And I don't really feel like I have to sell you on that at this point, because you've probably gotten a pretty good idea about that. Uh, so if you're interested in learning more, I have a GitHub repository called Learn VR, which I linked up here, that covers a lot of the resources that I've found particularly helpful around all facets of VR development. Uh, if you go to justavrshow.com, you'll be directed to all of the VR episodes that I've done 
Uh, and I've got three up there specifically about web VR technologies. And uh, one of my personal things is that I am trying to persuade the Edge team to support web VR. So you can go to livy.link slash web VR Edge and help show your support for bringing it into the browser too. Uh, so with that, I think we've got a panel Q&A coming up. Thank you all so much. And if you need have further questions after the Q&A, just come find me. Thank <laughs> you.